Hi, I'm Eyal and welcome to another video link webinar. Today I will demonstrate how to use our new AI based automated closed captioning. We call it edit and I will be demonstrating two use cases. Uh, the first one is going to be how to take a video source, uh, add the automated closed captioning, uh, use our editor to improve the accuracy of the captions that are coming out uh, from the system and then we'll be streaming that live video with the correct uh, closed captioning uh, to LinkedIn, uh, to YouTube, uh, to uh, Twitch uh, and see over there that these captions are arriving properly the way that we want them to show. Uh, the second use case is going to be uh, taking a video file and then creating um, automated closed captioning using the editor to make changes to correct any kind of spellings and then to basically export uh, an SRT, a VTT or a transcript uh, in a PDF format. So let's get to it. First thing to do when you are coming into the channel is to select your video source. I selected a, a file, a recorded file, but you can select a webcam signal, you can select an RTMP encoder or talk to another stream. Uh, write down a name for your source name so you can recognize it and update. When you update, the source becomes active. The next thing we want to do is to uh, make sure that we are preparing the closed captioning environment uh, to receive the audio and to create those automated closed captioning. So I click on the CC tab and you'll see here that you have the options to add an automated closed captioning to the video. I will select also the delay of one minute and then start the channel. When I start the channel, the video is going to show up inside here. I muted the audio so we are not being disturbed here. And the next step that you have to do is you have to match from the drop down of languages we have the correct uh, audio that comes with the video to the captions that you want to generate. This is an English speaking uh, recording file. So I'm using here English USA and you have English of different uh, countries uh, to match uh, uh, a specific accent or a slogan uh, being used and it will help the AI recognize the, uh, the, the audio. Um, it takes about 60 seconds for the system to kind of get the audio, recognize the audio, begin the automation process of creating the captions uh, during this time, uh, you are not going to see the captions over the video, but after uh, uh, 30 seconds, uh, you will be able then to click on start the captioning. You'll see the alert, the, the warning here, because this is a paid service. So always remember to uh, start the captioning when you need it and stop it when you don't need it. Otherwise, you're going to incur a fee. It takes 60 seconds uh, for the captions to show over the video. During this time you are not going to see captions and that gives us a few seconds here to go and to show you the editor. If you click in here you are going to be able to see the editor. The editor already sees the captions which is good and quick orientation. So on the left side you're going to see um, the uh, automated captions that are being generated by the system. Um, you will see here how many uh, characters are being used. So for example, this one has 26, this one has 10 characters. You also see here in red how many seconds you have before the captions are no longer available for you to do the editing and are being inserted into the video. Um, this icon allows you to create uh, breaks in paragraphs and space between the paragraphs is very uh, good for a transcript when you're printing a transcript. This one allows you to remove a line. For example, if you don't like a line, you can just remove it. And in here, you're going to see the location, uh, the timestamp of when the captions start and stop in relationship to the video. Um, this is this area has been used afterwards when we create the SRT and the VTT files uh, to sync the captions to the video. So let's uh, uh, we have already captions in the system. And I will basically show you um, the player. Let's go back to the player. 
when captions are available for the preview player and also later when we push out the captions and the video to destinations, you can click in here, you can select the language and what's going to happen, uh, the player after a few seconds will begin showing the captions over the video and they will be synced with the audio. Now let me demonstrate how to do the editing. So we are at a one minute delay, I'm opening the editor, I am now uh, seeing here uh, dynamically the captions being generated. Uh, they will include basic punctuation, so for example a capital letter in the beginning of a sentence, a comma, uh, a period, um, and the capitalization when the system, G, like GDP, you see GDP, so the system recognizes certain words, will capitalize them, um, and will give you a sp the opportunity to make the changes as you go. To make a change, what you do is you scroll down. You'll see here we have plenty of time to make changes. So for example, this sentence. I want to basically make a change here in this sentence. I can see that I have about 20 something seconds. And I'm gonna make just a quick change in here. I'm gonna skip a line, go to here, make the changes in here. And I see that I'm running quick out of time. So I'm gonna make here another change. I have about 20 seconds delay and I will then um, be able to go back into the stream and I will now wait about 20 seconds and I will see that the stream is going to carry the corrected captions with the changes that I wanted to apply sync properly uh, into the audio. So the delay was about 20 seconds uh, that means that any time now here we go my KKK one line was as is and then the second one with NNN um, when you want to send the video to a player, either to a video like a video link player, you can create the player in here. If you want to send the video to social media, um, I am going to uh, use presets that I have in here. I already created so we don't lose time. I created a stream that is going to go to Twitch, a stream is going to go to YouTube, a stream is going to go to LinkedIn. I'm starting now these streams. And I'm going to go and check that they are present uh, at the destination. It takes about 60 seconds for these streams to be able to, here it is, uh, to be able to uh, begin at the destination. And I will just refresh it. Yeah, about 60 seconds. So let's refresh LinkedIn. Yeah, just give it some time. Twitch is quick. And I enable the CC option uh, at the destination. You need to have a, a social media platform or a destination, a video platform or a CDN that supports closed captioning in their player. The reason is we are hiding the captions. They're coming with a video, but they're not visible. So the player needs to be clicked by the user and then the captions will show up on the video. This is the, the, the big difference between closed captioning and open captioning. Closed captioning allows the viewer to select when they want to see the captions. Open captions are burned into the video and are visible all the time. I'm going to refresh now LinkedIn. Still take some time. Let's go back inside YouTube. Oh, okay, YouTube is here. YouTube is running and we are fine. Back inside here, inside the console, um, I will show you now how uh, you are going to be able to do uh, editing of the captions when you work with a team. If you are a single operator, of course, you're going to go inside here. You can hear the audio as it runs and then you can click on the editor and perform your edits in here. But what happens when there are multiple people part of the production? So we have the technical person responsible for the stream, for the setup. They work in here, inside the console. But when you have more people, or if you want to assign somebody from your team just to do the uh, editing of the captions, what you need is a video link uh, plan that supports Studio. The pr our premium and enterprise plan supports Studio. So you'll go into Studio. You'll go inside a project. I already created here a project for us and I enable the destinations that we have. Make sure that you see that the project is online. You can come inside here, you can see that the streams are running. Uh, it's not running on uh, LinkedIn because LinkedIn does not support playback outside of LinkedIn.com. And then what you can do are two things. Um, if you allow the operator to come here 
and they are using a login to log into the video link dashboard all they have to do is click on the cc tab in here and they can do their editing in here but when you don't want the closed captioning operator to log in into the video link dashboard because it's perhaps um, uh, a partner uh, a member of a partner team or if you are the video production company and your customer is the one who is going to be making the changes to the captions so what you do you go inside the tab the teams tab of studio you create an invitation you select the role of the broadcast operator you put their email address and you send them an invite they will get their own invite where they will be able to log in to the platform using their email address and their own password and what they see in there is this I'm going to create here a simulation of what uh, the closed captioning operator can see it's a unique operator URL outside of the studio they get it they come in if they are assigned to multiple projects they will see all their projects that were assigned to them and then when they are here they have no control of the video all they have is control of the chat because chat operators and closed captioning operators share the same interface if you are a chat operator you'll see all questions coming from social media or from the video link moderated chat and then you're going to be able to um, assign these questions to the presenter or decide to put them as a layer over the video but we are now focused on the chat operator so a chat operator will see the captions as they come in here and they will be able to go make their changes uh, break the paragraph um, assign whatever they want to assign to the captions and whatever they do goes like i showed before over the video and is part of the broadcast um, we came to the end of the broadcast right so we are right now at the end of the broadcast and what we want to do is we want to be able to um, export the captioning and export the transcript so then the caption operator what they do when everything ends they come in here they click on srt they click on vtt they save the files to the local download folder same thing with the transcript they save it to their local environment and it's the responsibility then to take those files and forward them to the video production team or to the producer so they can then take those files and do whatever they need to do it if the customer is the one who needs to receive these files anyway there they go they have it in their download folder and they can begin immediately using them i'm going to go now back into the channel and what i will be doing is i'm going to be the the, the master technical uh, operator of the broadcast and i want to stop now the stream i want to stop them from being sent to uh, you know to to where i send them with the captioning so what i have to do i go in reverse the first step that I do is I stop either one by one or all at once the transmission to the social media or to the destinations. Step number two, I have to stop the captioning. The reason I'm doing this is because when we created the delay, if you remember the delay, we actually tweaked the time of the broadcast. If I stop first the captions and then I stop the transmission, there will be a jump, a last jump that audience will get on the video send out of video link to all destinations so remember step number one when you want to stop the broadcast and the transmission to the destinations then end the closed captioning and the last step stop the, the the signal from going out when you stop the signal from going out if you were using the video link player or third party players that signal will stop as well and then you basically just stop the uh, enabling you, you stop the enablement of the video source so the channel goes to sleep that's it so this concludes basically the first part of what i wanted to show you which is how to add captioning uh, live caption in real time and perform editing uh, so the captions are accurate before they go to the video link player to third party players or to any destination that you select to broadcast to from the, um, the different uh, destinations that we support here the next part is what we do when we have a file and how we take that file upload it and then create captions for that pre-recorded video to use the automated 
closed captioning for media for files uh, click on the sources click on the content management you'll come into this area where the media files are being uploaded what you need to do is find the file on your computer and upload it. Uh, I prepare in advance a folder with multiple sample languages, files that were pre-recorded before, and I'm going to go first for the uh, Spanish. So for example, uh, this one here, I'll pick up the Spanish and upload it. You can see in here how the files are being uploaded, what's the speed ratio, and notification when the file was uploaded and successfully. Um, you can go and change the names of the files anytime you like by clicking in here and just for example change this to just sample Spanish and save it and then to create the automated closed captioning you do the following you click here to indicate this is the file I want to uh, create captions from and here you have to drop down select Spanish and you will see that there are sometimes different variations of the language I'm selecting the Spanish USA and then just click start uh, you get, uh, of course, uh, an alert saying that you are about to use a paid service, uh, you agree to it, and then you wait. While we are taking the file and begin um, the preparation to extract uh, from the audio the closed captioning, you will see uh, a notification, you will see here um, that the job is in progress. Uh, most important, you will see this yellow alert, stand by as we process your request to create closed captioning, do not close the window. The reason that we are asking you not to close the window or not to navigate away from here um, is because uh, we need to establish a connection and to confirm that you are still um, want to do the task, want to do the job. Uh, and that's what's happening. So it takes a couple of minutes, it really depends on the file size. And as soon as the uh, uh, job is uh, completed, um, you're going to see a, a green alert saying complete, like we just saw. And what happens at that time is that the captions that we created get immediately attached to the video file. Now you move into editing. So you click again on the file and you want to move into the editor. And once you launch the editor, um, you can do a couple of things. For example, you can play the video if you want to play the video. Uh, to listen to it, uh, to match the audio to the um, uh, text that we extracted. Um, if you jump inside the video, for example, what's going to happen? The captions will sync up properly and jump into that area. Um, let me just stop the video for a moment so we can focus on the captions. In here, like with the live editor, you would have all the captions that we extracted from the beginning of the audio file till the end of it. Like with the live editor, you can see here how many characters are being used for the caption file. Um, if you want to create a line break, uh, for example, I don't know, here as an example, you still have two characters that you can add. So you add a period and then you create a line break. And when you create the line break, of course, the uh, transcript will have uh, an end of a paragraph space. And then the next paragraph begins in here. Just have to capitalize the first letter, first word uh, of the new paragraph. Um, the timing in here is automatically calculated. So if you make any changes, if you remove a line, for example, we adjust this timing. And this timing are going to uh, show up properly afterwards when you export an SRT or a VTT file. So this is uh, how to uh, edit the, uh, the captions that are being created. Um, if you want to do mass um, job changes, for example, you had uh, a person that appears multiple times inside the video, his last name or her last name appears, uh, you notice that the AI is making a mistake in the way it spells that last name. So what you would do is you would, for example, do like that and you can see that it will pick up any word that has an ESTA um, and you'll be able then to go and to do a batch uh, uh, editing and quickly change. Like with the live captioning, um, you are doing the editing, you perform the editing inside the box and as soon as you put it outside, it will save it. Um, you made mistakes, you want to go back to the original uh, caption job, 
you don't need to delete and start all over. All you do is just click on reset and we are going to retrieve back into the environment the old saved um, version of your uh, caption job and then you do your work etc. One last thing in here, um, billable hours. So if you want to know uh, how much uh, of the service, how many hours of the service you use during the month, you click it in here. You are then able to sort it by final name, by hours, and you can see in here uh, also what kind of um, content was edited, if it's recorded media, if it's live stream, etc. All the hours are here, uh, the different dates, the type of the job and of course you can just export your csv file open it in excel or google sheets and have all these records if you need to create an internal billing for your customers uh, this is it um, one more last thing uh, languages we support are all listed inside here and you can see we support about 60 languages um, portuguese uh, Ukrainian, uh, even Zulu. So when these languages are being processed, uh, you go to the editor, you do your editing. If the language is written um, right to left, when you are inside the editor, just change this and it will align it properly. That concludes our uh, live webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact us. Uh, you can reach uh, our team uh, using the live chat that we have at the lower uh, right corner of the website. Um, and uh, we will be happy to demonstrate uh, and to talk to you uh, on your specific use cases. Uh, feel free to book us for a demo. Uh, I'll be available to assist. And we are looking forward to uh, help you out uh, with your use cases, with your projects, um, and to let you use uh, edit.